Good morning, everyone. So today, I thought we would evaluate Creation is Messy Orange Zilla. <laughs> and um, this is another new color that comes from Creation is Messy 2021 release. And the way that we are going to evaluate this is by making a little octopus. So let's play with Orange Zilla and let's make an octopus. So I don't have a whole lot of orange colors in my inventory, but I did make some test samples of what I had. So the first color I want to compare this with is Creation is Messy Phoenix. And so I think Phoenix is a little more opaque than Orange Zilla, and it's a little lighter orange. Um, orange Zilla, I think that Creation is Messy calls it a transparent, but it's definitely got some translucent properties as well. And when you really pile it up on the octopus, it, it looks kind of opaque. So a little bit of everything with Orange Zilla, but that's Orange Zilla with Phoenix. The next one I have, of course, is my Effetre Orange, if I can get it out. And that is a pure opaque. So you can see that the color on the Effetre is a little more dense than the Orange Zilla. Um, and maybe also a little lighter of the orange, except in the areas where I overtorched it and burned it right down here. <laughs> I always do that with my Effetre colors. And then the final one I did was um, a Fetre Carrot Red. And this is probably the closest that I could get with the Orange Zilla as far as color goes. So there's a comparison with a Fetre Carrot Red on the right and Orange Zilla on the left. So we're going to use Orange Zilla to make our octopus. I made some hand pulled stringers of Orange Zilla. And I have a light blue, a Fetre light blue or sky blue um, for the base. And then I am going to use some of my Fetre frit, my homemade frit, just because to make the base bead kind of bumpy. Because octopus like to hang out in rocks. And so I thought that would be pretty. And those are our colors for today. Okay, here we go. Um, I started off with just a little base bead. It's five across by two wraps high. And now I'm going to make one of my chunk nuggets. So I'm just heating up this sky blue base bead. And then I'm going to roll it in my homemade frit and get some of that frit to stick. And now we're going to kind of melt it down. And um, I made a video. Oh gosh, it was one of my first videos called chunk nuggets and I was I use I made chunk nuggets for a way to use up my frit so if you guys want to check that out that was like from last year April of last year sometime wow seems like a lifetime ago all right so I'm just pressing those little nuggets in just kind of giving them making them smooth a bit but I still kind of want them chunky thus the name chunk nuggets Okay, our octopus has eight legs. So I got one of my stringers here and I'm just gonna pick a spot and I'm gonna start making his legs. So I put four on one side, four on the other. So down goes the stringer and we're just gonna make a curly cue, like so. And then we're gonna start at the same starting point and make another curly cue, a little longer. I think octopus, their legs, they get longer as they extend out. I don't know. I didn't watch National Geographic before this. And there's a little leg there, a little leg there. And then let's come out on the other side. A little curly cue up here. One, two, ah! I hope I have enough room. There we go, perfect. Three, all right eight legs on our octopus. I'm going to go ahead and smash those stringers down. Um, that was the Orange Zilla stringer and 
I didn't say anything because it worked so well. <laughs> no problem, smooth, no shockiness. Um, I would say that the Orange Zilla, it's a little stiffer than the glass we used last week, but when you're doing stringer work, that's great. I like a stiffer glass when I'm doing like stringer work because then it doesn't melt too quickly. Okay, we got our legs on. Now, let's go for our orange Zilla head on our octopus. And we're gonna revisit a technique here about fusing the head onto the body because the head kind of sticks out a bit and I don't want it popping off. So, I'm getting my glob on my rod really hot, but I'm also getting that base bead hot. And I'm gonna start out with just a glob right there in the center of his body. And now we're going to build up his head by just making some coils around that first blob, just like so. And I don't make it too big, just enough glass to work with. That looks good. Let's melt that down and see what we got. So I'm gonna melt all of that together. And using gravity to try and get the octopus shape, which looks really good. I don't know, does the octopus have a shape? <laughs> I think I'm overthinking it. All right, I like his head just like that. Oh, let me zoom in and see if you can see this. There we go, there's his head right there. All right, back to, let's see. Sorry guys, I'm trying, I'm trying to help. Here we go. <laughs> All right, now I'm gonna put his eyes on. And the way that I do that is I'm gonna put two dots on each side of his head, and then we're going to sculpt in a little divot. So there's one eyeball there. And then on the other side, another eyeball there. And then I've got my stylus. And I am just going to punch down a divot in his eye. Just like so. Oh, hope you can see that. Come on, little octopus, focus. All right. Let's try the other side. Just punch in a little divot. Kind of move your stylus around a bit so you can get that divot kind of big. But I do want to frame his eye. And then I've got a little white, just my little white stringer. And we're going to put his eyeball right in the center of that divot. And of course, now I'm going to start shaking. Oh, sure. Now I'm going to start shaking. All right, there's our octopus. Now he needs some pupils. So I've got my black stringer. One pupil there. And then one pupil on the other side. Try to get it in the center. Let's go ahead and smash that pupil down a bit. Smash those eyeballs down a bit. And there you go, guys. That is your orange Zilla octopus. I think he came out cute. Nice glass. I like it. It's going on the list of glass to buy in the future. Have a great day, everyone. I'll see you soon. Bye. Okay, guys, here is my super boring copyright notice. Um, basically, the video is copyright protected. So, if you would like to show this to someone, just send me an email. If, Maria, I want to show your video in my glass group or maybe at show and tell at school, just send me an email. I'm pretty generous with my copyright. I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, the bead in this video is also copyright protected. However, I hereby give you permission to make this bead for yourself. And I give you permission to make this bead as a gift for your friends and family. And I also give you permission and blessings and thanks 
if you want to make beads for a charity. The only thing I ask is that you don't sell any of my beads because I'm selling my beads. Now, that being said, if you want to sell your beads, like say five beads at my church bazaar, send me an email and we can work something out. If you want to sell a dozen beads at your local craft show, send me an email. We'll work something out. If you want to sell 80 million beads on Amazon, Oh my God, send me an email and we can talk about royalties and the millions of dollars we're going to make selling beads. Anyways, guys, get a hold of me. I'm really generous with my copyright. I'm not here to make any money. Um, so yeah, talk to me. Don't be scared. It'll be all right. Take care. Thanks for hanging out and I'll see you soon. Bye.